Hello, dear students. Uh, so now we're going to discuss together the different types of bone tissue. Okay. So by the end of this lecture, yeah, you will be able to describe the microscopic structure of the compact bone, describe the organization of bone lamellae in the in the compact bone, describe the structure of haversion system, and finally describe the microscopic structure of cancellous bone. So the first, the compact bone. Compact bone is uh, uh, defined as a solid ivory type of the bone tissue, which is formed by a, a, a regularly arranged bone lamellae. Okay, so uh, let's uh, discuss together the sites of compact bone. There are two uh, uh, types of uh, the bone tissue, either the compact bone, which I'm going to uh, discuss now, uh, or the cancellous or spongy bone. Okay, so for the compact bone, uh, regarding the sites of compact bone, it can be found in the shaft of long bones, shaft of long bones like humerus and femur, and it can also be found in the outer and the inner tables of the flat bones like the skull. Uh, um, if we can take a, a section of the uh, of, of the skull bones, we can uh, notice that uh, the compact bone occupies the outer and inner surfaces or tables of the com of the skull bone. Okay, and finally, around or covering the short bones like the vertebrae, uh, uh, for example, and ribs. Okay, so so uh, these are the sites of the compact bone, either shaft of long bones, outer and inner surfaces of the uh, flat bones like skull, and the outer coverings of short bones like the vertebrae and ribs. So now. Uh, it, uh, if we can take it, if, uh, if we can uh, examine the uh, structure of the compact bone under the microscope, we can find that it is organized actually into three zones: the outer, intermediate, and inner zones. Okay, so let's move on now to the next slide. So the outer zone is uh, formed of actually two main components: either the periosteum, and we uh, previously. In the first lecture of the bone, we discussed the periosteum, and we mentioned that it is formed of two layers, which are the uh, outer cellular layer and the inner osteogenic layer, containing the two main cells forming the osteogenic layer, which are the osteogenic cells and the osteoplast cells. Okay, and after that, uh, let's uh, 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 zoom into into this picture. So we can find that a periosteum covering of the compact bone this is uh, one of the two main constituents of the outer zone of the compact bone okay the other component of the outer zone of compact bone is the organization of the bone matrix as we mentioned before in the previous lecture into uh, parallel lamellae or parallel layers of bone tissue of calcified bone tissue this is called the outer circumferential lamellae why circumferential? Because it, uh, as evident in this picture, it turns around and around and circular to the compact to the long bone. So this layer just beneath is the periosteum, which is a form of parallel layers of uh, um, calcified bone matrix, is called the outer circumferential lamellae. Okay. Uh, now, the uh, middle zone. Let's uh, zoom in again. So now the middle zone is formed of the haversion systems, as we mentioned before, but we are going to discuss the haversion system uh, in the next few slides. Uh, so the middle or intermediate zone is formed the, of the haversion systems, okay, these, these circular structures. And in between the haversion system lies irregularly arranged bone lamellae called interstitial lamellae as you are going to discuss later on now. And finally, the inner zone, which is formed of the endosteum lining, the bone marrow cavities, or the inner surface of the uh, lung of the bone, uh, um, and, deep uh, uh, and uh, deep to the endosteum lies a layer similar to the outer uh, circumferential lamellae, but deep to the endosteum. That's why it's called inner circumferential lamellae. Okay? Also, if you remember that the uh, endosteum, as we are going to discuss later on, um, the endosteum lining lines the inner part uh, of the compact bone, okay, 
uh, or the inner surface of the compact bone and also the volcments and haversion canals as we mentioned in the previous lecture and we are going to discuss uh, these structures again in the next few slides okay sorry so now this is a, a H and D or the or a light microscopic picture of the of a, a section of the com of the uh, long bone. We can see that the outer covering here, the periosteum layer, and actually it's formed of two layers: the outer fibrous layer and the inner osteogenic layer, formed of osteogenic cells and osteoplasts. Yes, exactly. And beneath the periosteum lies the outer circumferential lamellae, which are parallel layers of calcified bone layers and uh, or bone lamellae deep to the periosteal layer okay so that's the outer zone of the uh, of the uh, compact bone uh, in some locations like at the site of attachment of the muscles and tendons arise uh, uh, perforating fibers of sharpie perforating fibers of sharpie like here to attach the, to the periosteum to the outer circumferential lamellae and additionally to the interstitial lamellae deep in the intermediate zone. This helps to fix the attachment of the muscles and tendons and the tendons to the periosteum and to, to the uh, uh, inside or the deep layers of the bone uh, tissue itself. Okay, to help fix the uh, ten muscles and tendons to the bone. Now the intermediate zone, as we mentioned, in <coughs> Sorry, as we mentioned, it's formed of the haversion system, and the in between the haversion systems lies the interstitial lamellae. Now, this uh, is a cut uh, section or a transverse section of a compact bone. We can see that there is uh, a circular structures as we uh, uh, as we have uh, seen in the uh, previous slides, uh, uh, circular or uh, uh, structures called haversion systems. And in between these has circular structures lies a regularly arranged bone lamellae called interstitial lamellae. Okay, so now uh, let's discuss the haversion system. The haversion system actually is formed, as we can see in this picture, if we can zoom into the uh, uh, cut section of the long bone, and now uh, uh, zoom in into this uh, into uh, into the, uh, this picture right in now. We can see that the uh, the bone is covered covered by a layer of periosteum, and underlying this uh, periosteal layer lies the outer circumferential lamellae. And the deep to the outer circumferential lamellae, we will start now to look at the intermediate zone, which is formed of the, the circular structures, as we mentioned before, uh, called the haversion systems. And in between these haversion systems lie the interstitial lamellae. So the haversion uh, sis um, systems. Uh, in contrary to the outer circumferential lamellae, um, um, I'm going to explain something now in the outer uh, in the outer circumferential uh, lamellae. Uh, we have mentioned it before, but we are going to um, to mention it now again. The outer circumferential lamellae is formed actually of uh, barely calcified bone uh, layers or bone uh, uh, lamellae, uh, and enclosing in between these lamellae are lacunae of osteocytes in, in trapped inside the, its lacunae in between the these bone lamellae. Okay, so uh, these lamellae are parallel to each other in the outer circumferential lamellae. While here in the haversion system, we can see that uh, there is a longitudinal uh, canal uh, running along the longitudinal axis of the long bones, which is called a haversion canal, haversion canal, uh, uh, located central in the haversion system and surrounded by concentric layers uh, concentric layers of uh, calcified bone tissue um, uh, and enclosing in between and entrapping uh, lacunae containing the osteocytes in, in the haversion system. So now the haversion system is formed of concentric circular layers of uh, bone lamellae, uh, not uh, parallel, not uh, uh, parallel and, and running uh, along the uh, circular axis of the uh, long bones, like the outer circumferential lamellae. Okay, this system is enclosed and uh, tiny in compared to the outer circumferential lamellae. Now the uh, haversion canals, which uh, are located in the th in the central part of the haversion systems, 
uh, as you can see here it's uh, contain loose connective tissue and blood vessels nerves uh, to um, and uh, especially uh, the blood vessels to transmit the blood from the outer uh, part of the bone to the inside of the bone tissue and to the bone marrow cavities and uh, to the bone marrow tissue located in the um, uh, medullary cavities inside and also nerves running in these aversion systems or aversion canals okay uh, as you can see from this picture also that there are uh, transverse canals connecting aversion canals to each other and the connecting aversion canals to the uh, medullary cavities in the inside of the bone and to also to the outside to the perostium where uh, that's why the volcan's canal uh, is the method of connection of the, of the of the inside of the bone or the medullary cavities to the aversion canals to the outside of the bone or the periosteum located covering the bone tissue itself why because this volcan's canal together with the aversion canals uh, ensure that the blood vessels and nerves are transmitted from outside of the bone to in to in the inside of the bone and uh, transmitting its nutrients and sensations to all parts of the uh, bone tissue itself okay now we the, you can see here that uh, each aversion system is formed of around uh, 50 I mean from 5 to 20 concentric layers of calcified bone matrix okay and we can see here that this is a periosteum covering of the long bone and now this is the outer circumferential lamellae and this is the aversion system and the canal inside in the, located in the central part of the system is called aversion canal and this is a volkmann's canal connecting aversion canal to uh, the inner side of the bone or the medullary cavities and this is an also a Volkmann's canal connecting a version canal to another version canal and there is a uh, one more Volkmann's, Volkmann's canal connecting one version canal to the periosteum to, uh, to the uh, capillaries or the blood vessels located in the periosteum and we can see that the uh, calcified bone lamellae are actually including the uh, lacunae containing the osteocytes which is zoomed out here this is an osteocyte as i mentioned before with its processes running uh, in the tiny uh, canaliculi present uh, in the bone lamellae as i mentioned before also in the previous lecture that in the uh, calcified bone lamellae contain minute canaliculi where the processes of the osteocytes run in, in the, inside these canaliculi to connect adjacent osteocytes together thus keep the integrity of the bone tissue the signaling molecules and also the transmit of nutrients and impulse and the, the uh, um, signals from uh, f uh, from uh, the, from these osteocytes to the adjacent ones in a seamless manner okay now we can also uh, remember from the previous lecture that the endosteum lines the medullary cavities of the uh, bone and also the aversion canals and the Volkmann's canal. Any lining uh, from inside is uh, by the endosteum layer, which we mentioned before. It is formed of the osteogenic cells, uh, uh, which are osteogenic cells and osteoplasts, and also osteoclasts, which, which are bone resorbing cells. That's why the endosteum is an important. Uh, uh, um, layer for the con continuous dynamic remodeling of the bone tissue where the osteoclast can resorb uh, broken uh, microscopic pieces of the bone tissue or worn out or old bone tissue uh, uh, and to be substituted by a new bone secreted by uh, or a new bone t uh, matrix or tissue secreted by the osteogenic cells and osteoplasts okay and you can see also in this picture here that uh, this is a periosteum formed of the both layers and outer circumferential milli aversion systems or aversion canals uh, inside the aversion system f uh, surrounded by concentric layers of bone lamellae and finally the inner part which is a medullary cav cavity lining lined by the endosteum layer which also lines the Volkmann's canal and aversion canals as we mentioned now we can see here that in in between the aversion canals or sorry in between the aversion systems okay lies irregular 
bone lamellae running irregular in various directions. These are actually all the haversion systems subjected to the continuous dynamic process of the remodeling, as we mentioned before. However, these are the remnants of old haversion systems entrapped in between new haversion systems okay so that's why the intermediate zone is formed of aversion systems and in between them irregularly arranged uh, interstitial lamellae of bone tissue we can see in this picture that the osteocytes with uh, its processes connected through gap junctions with with adjacent osteocytes in uh, in uh, in uh, at a large scale where these cells can transmit molecules nutrients and signals uh, between each other in a seamless manner. Okay, this is an also an osteocyte with its processes running in the lacunae of the uh, bone uh, lamellae. So now the interstitial lamellae we have uh, mentioned it before. Uh, uh, now uh, it is, uh, uh, and we can uh, recap it that it is formed of the irregularly arranged uh, calcified bone lamellae. Um, uh, uh, or uh, which which are remnants of the old haversion systems subjected to the process of remodeling and entrapped in between the new aversion systems. Okay, so in the intermediate zone, we can see here that these are a new haversion systems, and these are th these are irregular uh, lamellae, which are interstitial lamellae entrapped in between the haversion systems, running irregular in various directions not in a circular manner so these are the interstitial lamellae and also here in this picture so now the, let's go into the inner zone which is formed of the endoscium lining uh, the bone marrow cavity in from the inside of the bone and uh, followed uh, just deep or beneath it the inner circumferential lamellae which we mentioned before that the inner circumferential lamellae uh, actually is uh, um, similar to the outer circumferential lamellae uh, running uh, parallel but to, uh, deep to the endosteum rather than the periosteum okay so this is the endosteum lining of the bone tissue and this is the uh, parallel cons uh, layers of the uh, calcified bone tissue uh, no, uh, known as the inner circumferential lamellae. So now the uh, to recap some uh, important info that we mentioned before uh, that the compact bone is formed of the different uh, arrangement of uh, or organization of the bone lamellae and this bone lamellae entrapping osteocytes inside the, its lacunae in between these lamellae and the, uh, also the uh, osteocytes have minute processes running in the canaliculi in between these lamellae. Uh, there are also blood vessels and nerves uh, running uh, or connected from the outside or periosteum to the intostium and the medullary cavities and bone marrow tissue through the volcumens and haversion canals uh, between these uh, structures. And the, uh, finally, the outer surface of the bone, which is covered by the periosteum, and the inner surface running run, uh, covered by the endosteum, containing the three layers, uh, osteogenic osteoplast cells for bone-forming cells, or, or bone-forming cells, and the osteoclasts, which are bone-resorbing cells. Okay. The other uh, type of bone, which is a cancellous bone, uh, the sites, we, uh, as you remember, that the uh, uh, compact bone was found to be in the shaft of long bone. Okay, however, the epiphysis of the long bones is formed by cancellous bone, and we also mentioned that in flat bones, the compact bone forms the outer and the inner tables or surfaces of the flat bone as a skull. Now, the cancellous bone forms the middle, middle or middle layer of the flat bone like the skull and we also mentioned that the uh, compact bone forms the covering of short bones like the vertebrae and ribs while the inside of the short bones is formed totally of cancellous bone okay so the microscopic structure we can f see here that uh, the cancellous bone uh, as we mentioned that it is it is also uh, it is always covered by a, 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 a tiny uh, or a, a small layer of uh, compact bone. However, the 
uh, characteristic structure of the cancellous bone that it is formed by uh, osteocytes inside the lacrimae running in irregular and various directions, uh, actually in a, in a, in a tropically of uh, bone tissue containing the osteocytes inside its lacrimae, but running in an anastomosing and branching manner, okay? So these are the uh, tropically of the bone tissue containing osteocytes inside uh, its lacrimae and running in an anastomosing and irregular manner and branching together to anastomose again, thus forming uh, a, a network or trabecule of bone tissue, enclosing small spaces inside this trabecule or inside this network. These enclosed spaces are actually the medullary cavities hosting the bone marrow tissue. Okay, so the inside lining, the lining of the these spaces uh, must be aligned by endothelial cells, which are osteogenic cells, osteoplasts, and osteoclasts for bone resorption and re remodeling okay so this is uh, this is a network of bone trabecule if you cut if we have a cut section here you can notice that it is lined by industrial cells osteogenic osteoplast and there is one osteoclast the giant multinuclear cells and the bone tissue itself is formed of irregular trabecule of bone enclosing osteocytes inside its lacrimae okay So as a comparison between the compact and the cancellous bone, compact bone always looks like a solid structure, like here in the uh, co uh, uh, long bone, uh, while the cancellous bone uh, uh, looks like a spongy uh, because of its uh, shape like a trabecule or a network of bone trabecule. As uh, the sites, we have mentioned the sites before and the structure uh, of or, or the correct organization of these uh, uh, structures okay uh, there is an important aspect here that uh, th we didn't mention that the cancellous bone have any version of, of or Volkmann's canals because as we mentioned that the cancellous bone is formative of regular bone trabecule enclosing uh, uh, osteocytes in inside its lacrimae in between these uh, lamellae and in between the uh, trabecular network lies are uh, in enclosed spaces of the medullary cavities containing or hosting the bone marrow tissue okay so as a question for this lecture uh, um, i'm going to uh, um, uh, like the previous uh, lectures uh, to uh, mention the question head and if, uh, uh, if you, uh, you can take a pause of the video and think about the answer and uh, just to play the question after uh, uh, you, you you think about the answer for a moment. So now the inner circumferential lamellae are present. Um, which one of the answers? You can pause now the video. So the it is present around the endosteum. Okay, um, um, uh, uh, it is present deep and around the endosteum layer. The following are characteristics of immature bone. Um, Whenever the a, a bone is formed, like uh, a new bone is formed, like in fractures, for in healing of fractures of bone, for example, the 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 bone is initially formed to be uh, immature or not strong enough, okay, uh, to become gradually remodeled and become mature at the end, and hard enough, okay. So why? Because it has a minute uh, content. Uh, it, sorry, it, it has a large content of the proteoglycans. So that is the incorrect choice uh, here. And we mentioned before that the proteoglycans are one of the um, substances that um, it has a lot of uh, the glycosaminoglycans responsible for uh, absorption of water. So thus, the uh, bone tissue is immature because of having a large uh, content of the proteoglycans. The cancellous bone, you can pause the video, is formed of bone trabecule, that's right, and the bone marrow spaces. Okay. The osteoclasts, you can pause the video now. I think it was a very easy question. It has a multiple nuclei or multinucleated cell. Okay. Uh, the bone canaliculi, you can pause the video for now. Yes, that's right. It contains the processes of osteocytes, as we mentioned it several times previously. So thank you, and that's the end of this lecture. Thank you.